new 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 Alrighty for this is the 3DI, so it's a stereo um camera intended for industrial and prototyping uses. Okay, next up. Next up, this is an update. It's a STEMI QTification of our popular DRV 2605L. Um, this is a really great uh, video that Photo got because it shows, it's actually going through all of, there's like pre-programmed 250 plus-ish, um, you know, click and tap and buzz and strong buzz and medium buzz, little pre-programmed um, designs for vibration motors. It also works with ERMs, although I don't own any. Um, it's now STEMI QTified. Um, you still need to solder or connect on the vibration motor, um, but for haptic stuff, you can just plug and play, you know, connect it with a STEMI QT like so, and buzz away. Also, you, know, you can always strip the wires and probably just twist them on and it might work, okay, temporarily. Um, but I do like this little haptic driver. Uh, it's inexpensive and, you know, if you wanna drive these little vibration motors, you don't necessarily want to get like a full H bridge going and like program in all the different ticks and styles and shapes. It does a very good job of making a, a haptic interface. Everybody wants to make that project where you make a belt and it buzzes uh, based on what direction you're going. Now you can just plug and play all of them together. Yes. Okay, next up, we got an assortment. This assortment, so I actually got this for me and then I was like, you know what, other people probably want this too. So this is a collection of like 25 different buttons and you get 10 pieces of each. So I think that's just enough that you can like make trouble. Button and back. it's a mix of different sizes, different stems. They're all kind of like standard buttons. Um, so you will be able to get more of these. I'll, I'll try to find the matching uh, digikey lid. Yeah, I'm getting in there, hold on, hold on. Um, so for example, uh, here is a sort of standard through hole uh, 12 millimeter by 12 millimeter tactile switch. So this is your standard uh, flat top, um, but then also we have the SMT version. So same thing, but surface mount. So there's a mix of surface mount and through hole. Um, maybe you're like, well, I like that 12 millimeter button, but I really want a tall stem. This one has like a five millimeter stem, something like that, maybe six, sorry, 10 millimeter stem. Uh, or maybe you're like, well, I want one with a, with a cap. So you can add a, a, a nice button cap on the top. This is the uh, version with a cap stem. There is a bunch of the, you know, six by six millimeter tactile switches. So this is your standard six by six by five. Um, this is a six by six by 4.3. The, the height of the actuator is, is a common thing you have to tweak and they're always available in different sizes. So a little bit more flat. I like the five, but maybe people want uh, the six. Um, there's the right angle version. So this is a six by six uh, right angle style. So it uses a slightly different uh, pinout. So watch out for that. Uh, let me see if I have other six millimeter. Uh, we have six millimeter flat SMT. I like this kind of button. I remember seeing it first on the Arduino Uno. So um, same size, but SMT version. There's also one that is uh, that boxy shape, but also SMT. Sometimes we use these when you need a little bit more height. Um, there is the two pin right angle through hole six by six millimeter. So it's kind of like, I've actually never used these. Uh, it's a little funky because it's right angle, but doesn't have that uh, extra set of two pins for mechanical strength. So it's just a uh, two pin, but flap is still maybe useful. Um, let's see, we've got another one. This is, oh, this is a four, 4.5, so these are cute. Sometimes you see them and they're like, oh my God, it's a six by six millimeter tactile switch, but it's tiny. It's a small version. So um, it's so cute, 4.5 by 4.5. Oh, here's a, uh, a two pin, six by six. Again, a little bit weird. You don't see these very often, but um, very breadboard friendly. You don't have to wonder which pins are connected to inside together. These are very easy to understand. Um, so these are good for repairs as well as, of course, designing new products. And then there's like a bunch of other small switches. These are maybe less common. Uh, right angle 4.5 by 4.5. Um, you know, these are pretty common. We've seen three, three millimeter by six millimeter SMT. Um, right angle, we use this, this style a lot in our right angle designs. 
SMT right angle, three by six. So it has little uh, holes in the bottom you have to punch in to give it mechanical strength. There's the right angle, three by six with a lot of mechanical support on the back. There is the tinier three by six, the slimmer style. These are very, very cute and fashionable. The taller three by six. I know there's so many buttons, huh? So this is a taller style. I think we use this style on our, our Pi TFT. Uh, and then a bunch of small flat. Uh, oh wait, there's one more three by six. This is a, oh, it's a, it's a smaller actuator. So it's only the 4.3 height, not full five. And a lot of tiny little tactile switches, right angle, um, flat tactiles. Like we use these on the cutie pie. Um, these have a like slightly bigger actuator. That's kind of nice. These are ultra flats. These are like sometimes called dome switches. Um, this is, you know, I don't know what this one is called, but I see, you know, spark fun really likes using these little metal buttons with the gold, uh, plate. They're four by four millimeters. Um, here's this ultra small flat one as well. So you get all those 25 different buttons, 10 of each, uh, great for prototyping repair. Or if you're like, how big is a button that's 12 by 12 millimeters? Well, now you know. All right, let's keep going. Okay, next up, my goodness, is this motorized pot. Um, I've always loved motorized pots. You see them on fancy AV equipment. You know, it, you can load a setting and all the potentiometers will slide into the location um, that you had it's pretty much set. The, it's pretty much the the, the coolest thing and maybe the reason why many people go into yeah. music music production they're just like oh, it is it's uh, like if you have music if you're a music producer I, you're like should i uh, go to the overhead now yeah let's go to the overhead because I, I really have to sh show off so i have whoa, this whoa. hold on i know it's excited um okay. it, it always has like um a different feeling to it than other things that move it's like it's alive it's definitely alive so this demo is i've just got my feather and motor wing so this is a five volt to ten volt motor um you do need an h bridge to control it because going left and right basically is inverting the um polarity of the motor connect so you need a full h bridge um, but we have many in the store um when you can you know you can make a move to left and to the right and then when you don't have a voltage you can move it wherever you want. And then you would read the potentiometer signal off the bottom here, and it would tell you where you are. So, ah. so here's how it works. Like, let's say you're like, oh, I want it to be in the middle, which this isn't going to do because I have this pre-programmed. Um, you would set it to the middle and then you tell your microcontroller or microcomputer, hey, read this resistance, it reads the analog voltage. And then it would, if you want to recreate that, it would move the um, motor left or right until the reading matched up and it would stop mm. and then it would release it so that you could of course tweak it after it's been set. So the motor and the potentiometer are separate. It's not smart. It's not like you tell it, there's no way to tell it like, oh, if I give you half the voltage, it'll go to the middle. The, the motor either is on or off, pulls it all the way to the left, all the way to the right. That's all it knows. Um, the positioning control has to be done separately. And then this is the uh, slider. Note it's metal. There is one pad here. I don't know which one exactly, but it's in the data sheet uh, that's mechanically or electrically connected. You can use it as a capacitive touch detector so you would know somebody is touching it mm. so you can release the motor. This has everything. It does have everything. So we will probably use this on a project, but I wanted to get some of these in stock um, so we could do some cool audio projects with it. All right, and the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, our team at Adafruit, our community, our customers, and everyone who keeps this going is? The LSM 60S3 Plus uh, List 3 MDL. Uh, this is a nine off sensor uh, using two great ST sensors. Um, we used to stock one which had the LSM uh, 60S33, but the DS33 um, was in short supply and then during uh, the ship shortage was basically completely unavailable anymore. And so um, we've replaced it with um, the LSM 60S3 TRC, which is a really good quality uh, six DOF IMU, adding a magnetometer. Now it's a nine DOF. 
And um, the nice thing about this is now you can use it with um, you know sensor fusion to get full um, three dimensional orientation in space. Um, and so we'll we'll update our guide, of course, to show you how to do that. But um, you know this is a very affordable, easy to use, um, and well supported IMU. Uh, ST has libraries for it. Um, of course, we have Arduino support, Circuit Python, and Python support as well. It's also got some funky. Uh, you know, we we mentioned this when we sold just the individual. Um, six off IMU, there is um, a built-in step counter, pedometer, and um, lots of interrupts on motion. Um, there's also like FIFOs and stuff. Our library doesn't support the FIFOs, but if you are willing to use the ST library, um, the sensors themselves are actually quite powerful. And then, you know, if you need um, higher quality gyro, you can always upgrade to the LSM 6 DSO or the um, LS, sorry, ISM 330. So I thought I would just show on the overhead. We have a quick little demo just showing off. Uh, oops, not nearly as big as the accelerometer. So let's zoom in. Uh, so this has got accelerometer and gyroscope. And so you can see the accelerometer measures about 9.8 meters per second, you know, depending on which the orientation is. And then the gyroscope, the gyroscope when I twist it, it goes a little nutty. It's like, wow, you're moving many degrees per second. And then at the bottom, the magnetometer um, is measuring where we are in relation to north. So you can use that as a compass. But altogether, you can fuse the data uh, to tell you which way orientation is with uh, quaternions or Euler angles. Um, we have a library and example code on how to do that. Um, but there's also a lot of tutorials on how to do that with fusion data using these nine entries. All right. And that is new products this week, Lady Ada. Yes. New, 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 new,